Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iTunes number one kids and family podcast, and an iHeartRadio podcast awards best kids and family podcast nominee. Whew, I think that takes a whole lot of breath to say that. We have a fantastic show for you today. Our guest is one of our one of our friends and returning guests. Her name is Fiona Ingram. She is the author of the Chronicles of the Stone series, and she's here to tell us about her brand new book in that series, Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper. You know, I've been encouraging you to visit littlepassports.com slash reading now for a few episodes, and I gotta tell you, I love the website, littlepassports.com slash reading. I mean, I'm, I'm checking out the, um, the science the science expedition page on the box and and I know as a kid because I was I was like wicked curious I grew up in Boston that's why I was wicked curious I was wicked curious about the world around me especially about science and man if I had if I had a chance to receive a little passport science box every month and and explore and solve real life science mysteries oh man I would have been, I would have been in heaven. And the person who gave me that box would have been my hero. Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun filled packages right to their door every single month with engaging hands on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered. Little Passports monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a big bin like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It is the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Order today by going to littlepassports.com slash reading. We are so excited to welcome back one of our one of our first guests when the series uh, the, the podcast started um, over a year and a half ago. Our, our our today's guest was on and she is fabulous and she's coming to us today from Pephos uh, in Cyprus. She's the author of a brand new book called The Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper, which is the third book in the Chronicles of the Stone series. Please welcome back Fiona Ingram. Fiona, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, and very happy to be on the show again. I'm really excited. Uh, I, your your books, your middle grade series is uh, is filled with with lots of adventure and travel yes. and culture, and it's it, it's just a wonderful series. Yes, it is. Please tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you tell us what the, uh, the the new book, Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper, is all about? Well, um, anybody who's been familiar with my series or who read, you know, who's read about me will know that I have an ongoing series called The Chronicles of the Stone. And in it, these three youngsters are going around the world, gathering up these ancient stones of power. The youngest boy has been, um, he's been given the task of being a very special person and, um, I love ancient history. I love travel. I love all that. So I've poured all this into these books. And the, the good idea about having these ancient stones of power is that they can go to different countries. And they can, well, with, with the readers, the young heroes explore the history, the geography, the culture, all packaged in a fantastic adventure filled with baddies, action, excitement, near-death experiences, lots of nail-biting stuff that kids will absolutely love. And the third book, um, well, I, I've, I've, I've actually, well, if you're an author, the good part is that you can write books about what you like the most. Mm -hmm. And I love ancient history. My first book was about ancient Egypt, and the second book was King Arthur. And the third book is my fascination with the ancient Mesoamerican cultures of the Aztecs and the Maya. And the three children, uh, well, they, they end up in the jungle amazingly because their small plane piloted by their adult friend, crashes in the middle of the jungle, and they have this quest. They have to find the stone of power, but they're in the middle of the jungle, surrounded by wild animals, 
uncontacted tribes and there's an enemy following them. So they, they, they just get thrown into this unbelievable environment. No modern child would even know how to cope. In fact, I had to do a lot of research because I didn't know how to cope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I must say, I, I did a lot of research, and I read a couple of fantastic books about these were people who were exploring the Amazon jungle. This is the Mexican jungle, but believe mm-hmm. you me, jungle is as a jungle is as difficult as B jungle. Mm-hmm. And um, this one particular book was written by um, a New York a New York Times best selling author. Anyway, and when I, I picked up this book, and every night they would be slogging through the jungle and sliding down paths made slippery by rain and having to, you know, light fire with wet pieces of wood. And I kept thinking, gosh, this guy is such a whiner. But by the end of the book, I actually thought to myself how unbelievably difficult it must be to live in the jungle if you are a modern person used to technology and just with a click of a button, everything happens. So it was a wonderful book to use because this is what happened to my young heroes. They get saved by an uncontacted tribe, and it is a huge culture shock. And I think kids will love that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well you know, I haven't um, uh, been lost in a jungle. I've been lost in a mountain for a day when I was 12. That was that was pretty terrifying. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. <laughs> but, but this past summer, my wife and I took a trip down to Panama, and we went into the rainforest in Panama. And, nice. and we explored the rainforest from from – a, a boat, you know, so we were dry yes. on the river. Um, and we encountered crazy animals. I mean, alligators and howling yes. mon- monkeys and, and uh, boa constrictors. And it was, and we were on a boat. We were <laughs> safe on a boat. I can't imagine uh, being a kid and being in the jungle and encountering those kind of creatures. Um, talk about exciting Yes, and the most important thing as well is, well, I, I think a, a lot of writers need to find the balance between telling kids, readers, what is happening and filling them in on the information mm-hmm. and not overwhelming them with a, like a, just an overload where there's so much about the jungle that you lose the track of the story. So I've worked very hard to weave in the information, and I learned that from book one because – as you know, I mean, so much has been written about Egypt, and they're mm-hmm. always they're finding new things all the time. It was the most incredible culture, and I learned then that I would only tell young readers what the young heroes had to know. Otherwise, it would just be too much. So now, for the for the um, uh, Crystal Timekeeper book, I did the same thing. Only what the young heroes needed to know was all I put in because. It would have been just too much. You know, the Maya and the Aztecs, they're, they're also finding um, in- incredible ancient cities that have been h- hidden by the jungle canopy mm-hmm. for centuries. Mm-hmm. But with this new imaging, it's, it's well, I suppose, I suppose it could be called thermal imaging, but it's a new kind of imaging where it penetrates the jungle canopy and they can see either buildings that are still standing or the actual foundations, perhaps if the buildings have been destroyed. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's, it's a massive, the Aztec and the Maya, they're, they're two massive civilizations, fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, that, that's, the, that's the interesting part, that kids will actually learn. And I learned, <laughs> what can I say? I learned, I won't say I'm an expert, but it was a most amazing experience. Mm-hmm to become so much a part of the culture. And again, to pick and choose, to say, okay, now I can't have details of that. It's very interesting. But I can have details that are exciting because kids will like it. For example, now human sacrifice. Now parents might go, oh, no, my darling mustn't hear about human sacrifice. Human sacrifice has been around for centuries. Mm -hmm. And it's part of um, ancient society. And it was part of ancient religions. And, of course, the kids get caught up, and so one of them might be sacrificed. But, again, you know, to include all this detail very carefully. But I found a way to add extra stuff, which perhaps if anyone is a parent, a teacher, um, or in some kind of educator, at the back I have a young reader's guide. It's about 10 or 15 pages, and it's an, a slightly expanded version of, for example, who were the Aztecs, who were the Maya, um, human sacrifice, uh, the Mesoamerican ball game, which is a kind of an Aztec version of Quidditch from, 
Harry Potter, but it, <laughs> it actually exists. They, they actually had to play this game to survive. Uh-huh. Um, and, and, you know, because kids, kids are like sponges. And contrary to what many teachers might think, kids love to learn. Mm-hmm. They like learning things so they can show off to their friends that they know a big word or they know some big fact. And, but kids love to learn what they're interested in. Yes. That's the, that's the important thing. I mean, I'm sure when you were reading as a child, you read books you liked because you were interested in them. And that, that is the whole idea is to, is to, you know, to teach parents and teachers as well that kids love learning about what they enjoy. Yep. And, and another thing that as I look back on is, and, and it's something I think teachers and parents need to understand and authors too is that if we can make a subject that we feel passionate about and we can we can communicate that passion to the kids that can help get the kids interested in that thing yes and for example now um maybe i chose the first book i chose to be set in egypt it was a bit of bit of a happy coincidence i went to egypt with my with my mum and my two young nephews and the whole story was inspired by our adventures, which sadly were not one ounce as exciting as the adventures in the book, but still very exciting. <laughs> and um, I actually read on, on Amazon, a teacher had written a review to say she was using my book to teach the Egyptian syllabus. Now, when you think of the great stepping stone um, civilizations, these are all covered in the curriculum, the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Aztecs, the Maya, you know, these are big moments in in history that I think um, teachers and parents should consider if they're covered in a fiction book. And I'm very, I, I don't write made up facts. Mm-hmm. I use only real facts because it's just the researcher in me. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, making King so-and-so do something if he didn't actually do it in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, and and this is the most important thing is to is to find something that kids will love find something that I will love and write about it and if you don't mind me mentioning book four which I'm busy with sure. it's to do with the, the Knights Templar now the Knights Templar is like another adults love the Knights Templar there's mm-hmm. so many things about the Knights Templar and it's set in Paris in the catacombs of of Paris, and it's to do with the treasure of the Knights Templar. Again, it's, you know, history's woven into this incredible, exciting story. So that's that's the way I operate. Yeah, and, you know, history is fascinating, and there are loads and loads of great stories out there, and I, I don't know... I don't know how we, we seem to have gotten into the idea that we have to make these fascinating stories, history, science, boring. Fiona's going to be sharing her thoughts on why it's important to, to, to let history and science be exciting because they are exciting subjects. And, and our, our sponsor, Little Passports, is all about inspiring kids' curiosity in geography, world cultures, and science because they are so fascinating. Little Passports, the perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun fill packages right to their door every single month with engaging hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered, just waiting to be devoured by the curious kids in your life. Little Passports monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world culture, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a big bend like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It is the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Order today by going to littlepassports.com slash reading. And remember, that slash reading is really important. littlepassports.com slash reading. We, we seem to have gotten into the idea that we have to make these fascinating stories, history, science, boring. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it, 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 it's almost as if some academics decided, no, we, we have to make this boring in order for it to yes. be uh, valuable. To be yes. yes, yes, yes. 
Well, I, I, I'm, you know how your school teachers influence you. And when I was mm-hmm. in very junior school, I had an English teacher who instilled in me a love of books, a love of reading, a love of Eng- the English language. And because I loved it, I was very good at it. So I always got A's um, throughout my entire school career. And um, I also, in when I started high school, we had a, a history teacher who had traveled the world. She was amazing. She'd been everywhere. So when we did Hitler and Germany, we learned so much more about Germany than just our poor old Hitler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we, we learned about so many things that she'd done. I'll never forget her because... She'd actually gone to various places, and she loved traveling, and she instilled in us that love of knowledge about various places. For example, geography. I love geography. I love maps. I'm fascinated with maps. I've got this huge map book of all kind, all the countries of the world, and uh, very detailed. And in my books, there's a map in the front, so the kids know that that's the country they're going to. And then there's usually a secondary map. For example, if they're at at a particular place or a city or whatever, there's a map to show their location in relation to other places that might be mentioned. And kids love it because it shows them where they are in relation to the rest of the world. I think that is very important. Um, We need to think beyond ourselves Mm -hmm. and we need to consider that there is a big world out there and it is available for exploration and it's worthy of being explored. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you mentioned this this thing called a map that so many people don't even know about anymore. Yes. <laughs> and I think and but it is it it really it's it's a great way just to kind of visualize where we are and where we are in relation to each other and it's uh, very how and it's something I was I was fascinated with maps myself uh, growing up I it, it just it, it just seems to be a, a kind of a key that unlocks imagination I think if you um, look I, I, I would love to write fantasy mm-hmm. honestly I'd love to write fantasy but I'm completely useless at that I write more sort of fantastical fiction mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for me it's important that it is real and realistic. And although in fantasy, a lot of fantasy novels, which is very good, and I'm thinking particularly Lord of the Rings, there's, there's a map in the front, which is important. Mm-hmm. And I think that authors who include maps have a better chance of uh, keeping their, their readers interested. For example, this, this one about slogging through the Amazon, Amazon jungle, there was a map in the front, a double-page map too lucky me and I'd, I'd be reading and reading and then I quickly have my bookmark in the front and I'd go back to see where they were mm-hmm. and things like that are are just stunning mm-hmm. um, and I would encourage I would encourage teachers and parents to maybe it doesn't have to be my books but just to, to pick up a book and say oh where, where does this take place and even if it takes place down the road in another uh, another state like for example they might be in Michigan and the story takes place in Texas, to get a map, you know, get an atlas, look and say, mm-hmm. oh, how far is, are we from this particular town? If it's a realistic, if it's realistic fiction, and there's a lot of realistic fiction for kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that makes the book more tangible, makes the story more tangible, and kids remember it better. Yes. Don't you find that when you've watched something, like a documentary, like for example, you run, watch a documentary on crocodiles or sharks, you remember because you saw it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yes, and and it, it's right. And you you you're talking about just you know relationships, and you mentioned the states, and you know I, I, it's, it, sometimes kids think about Europe and all these different countries, but they have no idea that that mm-hmm. how where they are in relation to each other, and how close those countries are, and compare them to the states and and it, it it gives you a different perspective on what's going on in the world oh absolutely and i just applaud teachers who um find those new and unique ways of expanding beyond the book of showing kids um how to think oh, it's a cliched expression out of the box but how to think out of the box not just close the close the book and everything comes to an end. Um, and I usually find that if kids are very interested, they will read further. They will, they will well, 
I'm like that. I can read a book and um, I'll go, oh, that is, fa- that is fascinating. I wonder if that's true. So then I Google the incident or the city or the historical event and, you know, blow me down. It, it is true and I'm amazed and I read more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, on my website, which is www.chroniclesofthestone.com, it's very simple, um, I have a download very very much longer, maybe 40, 50 pages, which is called the Young Reader's Companion Guide. And it expands very much more on on different aspects of the book that I've touched on. I mean, for example, everybody thinks of the Maya and the Aztecs. But no, there were about five or six groups of people that perhaps people have never heard of. Mm -hmm. The Olmecs, the Toltecs, people who were called the Cloud People, some people were called the Rain People. I I found that fascinating. Why did they call them the Cloud People? Why did they call them the Rain People? So there's, there's so much more that came before the, 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 the Maya and the Aztecs. And this is what I hope to do, is to encourage kids to read around the subject. Mm-hmm. I would love it if they showed off in the, in the playground, say, oh, it's not just the Maya and the Aztecs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they would have um, an expanded knowledge. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I, I, I did want to talk to you about, because y- y- this is the Chronicles of the Stone, and yes. your heroes are searching for these stones with, with certain powers. And that's kind of a theme yeah. that, that runs through um, different stories and, and through, through stories throughout history. What is it, do you think, about the stone that kind of fascinate, fascinates us? Um, I think we want to believe in the magic. Ah, okay. We want to believe in the magic. And... That's why, oh, call me, call me imaginative. <laughs> but you know when they say, oh, we're about to discover if there is this or that, or we're about to disprove the Bermuda Triangle, and I think, oh no, don't. Let's keep the mystery. <laughs> oh, please don't X-ray the pyramids. Please don't X-ray the Sphinx. I, I don't. Whether there's something underneath the Great Pyramid, I don't know, but. I don't want to know. I want there to be a maybe. And I think that's what we secretly want is we like the, um, we like the magic. I mean, for example, book two, the, the stone of power is in the hilt of Excalibur. Mm-hmm. But forget about my imagination about Excalibur and the stone of power and the stone of power gave uh, Excalibur its, its amazing, amazing properties. When you read historical you know, that time ago, accounts of how they described Excalibur, it said it glowed, the, the, the sword glowed with the light of 30 torches. Now, you think to yourself, oh, oh well, 30 torches, and you think, oh, flashlights. And But no, 30 torches was a great big flaming brand like mm-hmm. you see in these fantasy movies or these medieval movies. So one sword glowed with the light of 30 torches. And remember, there's no electricity in those days. Mm -hmm. So a flame was a big deal. And I think to myself, you know, it must have had something special about it. I wonder what. And that's it. It was, it's tabulated in a variety of medieval writings. It glowed with the light of 30 torches. Mm. I thought, oh. Amazing. That's, that's it. There's a stone of power there. So I think that's it. It's to, we like the magic. Yeah. Well, I, I love magic. It's something I've been, I've been creating in my live shows for years and years. It's something I love to experience and it's something I love to read about and to imagine. And I know kids love it too. And I know kids are going to love Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper. Uh, and, and I'm so happy, Fiona, that there's a book four in the works, and that means that you oh, can absolutely. come back and tell us all about book four. I will indeed, and I hope by then I'm, I know a lot more about the Templars. Unfortunately, I've had like a sort of sketchy knowledge gleaned from commercial fiction mm-hmm. and um, movies, which is not always the way to, to, to research. But I now have a wonderful book which reads like – it reads like a storybook, and this writer is so good, and he's he just couches history in such wonderful terms, and it's called The Templars, History and Myth. Everything from the very beginning, from Solomon's Temple, right till the latest movies and Dan Brown's books type of thing. 
and um, and I'm I'm so enjoying it. And I, well, that's it. I love research. I think my fiction writing is just an excuse for me to go and do more research. <laughs> but I'm, I love every bit of it. <laughs> Well, that is fantastic. We love having you on here. And one of the things I just wanted to kind of point out, if, if you know, we, we definitely have, have, have heard your passion of, about this new book and about your series, but we've also heard how passionate you are about reading. And, and that's the thing that is so that, – that every author that comes on shares is, you know, if you want to be a writer, you need to read. Yes, you must be a reader to be a writer. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, and, yes. and I teach novel writing. Oh, fantastic. Where can folks find out more about that? I work for a, an online novel writing um, uh, company. Uh-huh. And it's, I'll just give you the initials, S-A-W-C, and their website will pop up. Excellent. S-A-W-C, yes. And I, I'm a very strict tutor, and I always warn people, Hello, so and so. I'm happy to be your tutor. Just timber, grammar, spelling, punctuation, very important. No one wants to read a badly written book. And I must say, they stick with me. I've never had anybody fall away and say, oh no, she's too tough on me. <laughs> well, if you, if you are at home and you have that novel that's inside you that needs to get out, definitely check out S A W C. And if you're a parent with a curious child that you're, they're looking to, um, to unlock their imagination, definitely check out the Chronicles of the Stone series. And the latest book is Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper. Fiona Ingram, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. You do not want to miss the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be our friend, Leslie Wall. She will be here. Should be here. If you're looking for some great books, if you're, if you're young adult, if your teen loves dystopian books, uh, and it's really a really popular, popular genre right now. If they love dystopian books, you don't want to miss the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Leslie Wall will be here with some of her fantastic suggestions, some great dystopian books that we will want to read with our teens. And reading with our teens, it's so important. And again, we, we mention it all the time, we're not talking about sitting on the couch and reading aloud together, although that is way cool. That is really, really cool. It, it, it's something we can do. We can co-read together and then talk about or find an audio version of the book and listen to it together on the way to dance or to soccer practice or to wherever. Hey, you know, Little Passports is the perfect holiday gift for that curious kid on your list. With the subscription to Little Passports, kids get fun-filled packages every month designed to inspire their curiosity in geography, world cultures, or science. For kids of all ages, order today at littlepassports.com slash reading. littlepassports.com slash reading. Hey, want to thank Fiona Ingram for being here. Make sure you check out Temple of the Crystal Timekeeper. We also want to thank our friends at Little Passports. And of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for taking adventures and expeditions with your kids. And thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.